Hello everyone. We are back with another video this week. We've been doing the series on barriers to spiritual growth and we have one more kind of personal barrier to talk about before we start part two of barriers to spiritual growth next week, which will kind of be about the church. So mm -hmm. this week though, we had a response from a young woman who was talking about parenthood. Yep. And that parenthood yep. can be a barrier to spiritual growth. It can be a whopper. It can be a whopper. Yeah. So we want to touch on that today and have a conversation. Here on the video today is mom, Becky Holton, also known as Becky Holton. <laughs> She's going to be helping out the video today too because I don't have children yet. So we're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that was gonna go. Yeah. I'm excited about this video too to kind of get some maybe advice and hear some thoughts on this subject too. You don't have the answers? I thought you did. I don't have any. <laughs> we really appreciate the response. This was a very unique response. Tell me mom what you think about parenthood and you know how that can be a barrier to spiritual growth and how difficult it is and just mm -hmm. give me your thoughts on that. Well, I really appreciated whoever whoever it was that made that response because I think it's very legitimate. Yeah, I um, do. Because, you know, when you begin to have children, um, your timetable is just, <laughs> it's pretty much up for grabs every day. Different every day. Oh, you never know. <laughs> and just about the time you get kind of a little schedule going and you have that little bit of maybe quiet time in the morning, you know, you uh, the, the stomach flu goes through <laughs> your family and you're cleaning throw up up all night long. And, you know, it's all That's you true. do to just crawl to the coffee, coffee pot the next morning, let alone having a little bit of quiet time. Right. So it is challenging. Um, yeah. I, think, I think it's difficult. But on the other hand, I'm not sure that it's a, I would call it a barrier. Sometimes difficulties can be really good things. What do, you, what do you mean by that, especially well, in terms of yeah. parenting? Well, I think as it, especially as it relates to parenting, that children are not, raising kids are not necessarily a barrier when it comes to spiritual formation and growing in your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And that there is a, a kind of a different dimension or a different perspective. And I just really want to encourage those that might be trying to watch this in the bathroom somewhere or have two seconds of where they've all taken a deep breath in between tantrums or something. If you're even watching this, congratulations. Yes. If you're upright, yes, really, we should send you chocolate if you're able to do this. If you're able to do this, yeah. you know, and I really, if you have that moment that you're watching this, I really want to encourage you and acknowledge the fact that this is hard. We don't have all the answers, but maybe we can just encourage you today to think about this a little bit differently because that's what it is. It is approaching quiet time and your walk with God in just a different way. And, and what I mean by that, you know, Suze, I remember a time, um, especially as you kids were little. One time in particular, I remember when your brother was really sick in ICU and all that kind of stuff. I remember what your dad and I went through with that little boy and how what we did to get help for him, how we were with him. We never left his side. And I'm here to tell you, I had to stand up to hospital administrators to make sure that happened. Yeah. I mean, you, I was there and yeah. with that child around the clock and so was your dad. And I realized in that moment that I was an imperfect parent and I would do anything to help that little boy be okay and be healthy. And it dawned on me that my Heavenly Father, which is a perfect parent, feels that way about me. Mm. And that opened a door That's for really me good. to think about my relationship with God and that I didn't have to do it all perfectly. Yeah. And that he, would, he was there helping me and guiding me even when I felt like things were going really badly. Mm -hmm. He was still there, and he is the perfect father, and he's going to help me and help prepare the way for me as I am growing closer to him. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember my, pr you know, that was just huge. That was a spiritual leap for me. Now, yeah. it wasn't, it didn't come from sitting down and studying the Bible, even though I'm not against that. In fact, you've got to have that, too. Right. But I think God 
God opens doors for you to develop a closer walk with Him when you're raising kids that may look different than what you have thought mm -hmm. it was going to, to be like. You know, things like that. Prayer took on a different dimension Which for I me. like because, yeah. again, you know, we don't have children and I know it's probably just busy when mm -hmm. you have kids and you're not going to always get the time to sit down and no. read scripture or when you do get that moment you might be exhausted mm -hmm. you might want to take a nap and I've, I've heard you say before what was it that you think God just has a special place for parents oh I do I think he has a very special place in his heart for parents right and I think what's most important for us is that we have the desire. I have, I can show you at home that little New Testament that your dad gave me when we got married. That's a very yeah. special New Testament, which it would fit in a diaper bag. I can show you a few pages. I, well, I'm embarrassed to admit it, but I drooled on it. I fell asleep. <laughs> I was so tired. It was when you kids were little. But you know what? I just think God just looked down on me and thought, bless her heart. She's trying. She wants it, and I'm going to help her. Right. And in those moments, I think God teaches you the spiritual training your dad and I tried to do with you all at home. We would be teaching you these little stories or reading you these things. And always in those moments, there were big girl ad applications for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You know, one I remember specifically, oh, it had been one of those mornings and every one of you had decided to do something completely <laughs> off chart, <laughs> you know, and I was about to have some kind of an, <laughs> the top of my head blow off or something, and I put on that record, which really tells you all how old I am now, the record. about the fruits of the Spirit. Oh. oh, my word, and that girl starts chirping that song about self-control. Self-control. <laughs> And I'm it's like, the very best oh, way to go. yes, I needed to hear that. <laughs> Although at that moment, it wasn't the very best way that I had gone. But I realized that through all of that, those lessons I was trying to teach you, God was adapting it and teaching me in my own life and just mm -hmm. deepening it for me and going on down different beauty. Mm -hmm. I never stopped to see beauty through the eyes of a child and the wonder and where God is in those places. It mm -hmm. was just incredible. So. Yeah. Well, I think that's interesting you bring that up. You know, even talking about, you know, self-control and mm -hmm. <clears throat> those are kind of behavior <laughs> characteristics. Yes. yes. And sometimes I wonder if kids don't necessarily remember what you did as parents, mm -hmm. but they remember who you are yeah. as parents, and they remember your character. Well, and I would hope. I would hope yeah. you remember, I I remember your some, character. <laughs> there were, I do. <laughs> there were some moments. Well, and what I hoped, but you, just how that works, yeah. even how you're still getting some of that fulfillment even when you're parenting. Absolutely. And I think kids see that. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you're modeling and sometimes you have to apologize. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. But even as the kids get older and they do get up early and they maybe interrupt your quiet time, you can, you know, I remember you, sometimes I would explain to you I was talking to God or reading the Bible and you could bring your Bible books in and mm -hmm. you would bring your little books in and sit there and, you know, we might have... 10 or 15 minutes before some kind of an explosion would happen or someone would announce it. I was supposed to make brownies for the entire school that day and they'd forgotten to tell me. I mean, but you have those moments and God blesses them. And you know, we've been talking about all this whole series you and dad have talked about that our responsibility is to show up and to have right. the desire and that it is a gift from God to help us develop that relationship. And that especially applies to children right. and when you're raising children, but it is such a blessing that he sometimes uses those moments. I think I grew up more as a mom, mm -hmm. as a person raising kids. And, and that's really important because you've got to get that layered in there, you've got to have that foundation, especially when your kids reach the teenage years, because those are hard. Yeah. Those are hard. In fact, I wasn't hard. My, my brothers are terrible. I was a piece of cake. <laughs> and moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were good. But no, we you know, all you, have moments. Well, yeah, we all have moments. Yeah. And, and I think even in those difficult times with teenagers, I was reminded when we had those headbutting sessions that every parent has with their kids, you know, yeah. and the wondering what were you thinking when you made that decision, 
in the quiet of the night and in my prayer time, I realized that oftentimes I had been a rebellious teenager with God myself. Mm -hmm. And that required me to be much more humble and gracious and strong, you know, when, when dealing right. with you all. But you could speak to that really better than I can because you and Bryce have been working for many years with teenagers. Um, you may have some comments that you can add to that of observations that you have about mm -hmm. the importance of spiritual health and spiritual stamina yeah. and a relationship with God when you're with your kids in those mm -hmm. those years where they're trying to figure out what in the dipsy doodle there's going on. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's it's very important. Yeah, and spiritual health I think is very important, especially when your kids are teenagers and it's it. It's been a blessing having to kind of work with teens because I've got to see how some parents mm -hmm. handle that yeah. and that's been really neat to watch that. You know, parents who really invest in their children when they're little, <clears throat> but then they don't stop investing once they're teens. Right. They right. keep investing and they they keep um, the conversations open to where they allow their teens to ask questions mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah. That, that's been really huge, I think, for some kids. And, and just having spiritual conversations in the household. Yes. I think. It's essential. It's so important. Yeah, yeah. Um, so important. I know we did that a lot growing up, and I've got to see other parents who have done that with their teens, too, mm -hmm. just to make sure that they're having spiritual conversations. One thing that I thought was neat, too, is that some parents were very intentional about not having such crazy schedules and being busy, but making sure they were doing just a few things and doing it really well. And one being their spiritual lives. Yes. Because they knew that their teenagers or kids saw what they valued. Mm -hmm. um, and you could really see that mm -hmm. overflow into their children. Mm -hmm. So some who really valued their spiritual time and their spiritual health. That's um, very good, yeah. And did that really well the kids, I mean, really picked up on it. Mm -hmm. um, which we that were, was neat and something that right. Bryce and I really right. took away. And we were talking with some parents the other day with teenage kids, three of them at home, God love their hearts. <laughs> <laughs> and they were talking about the conversations they were trying to have. They were talking yeah. about the things that they were trying to do to help develop that desire to have quiet time with the Lord in their kids' lives, and I right. was really, really touched by how they were trying to manage their time better, because really, that's what it's about, with the exception of the small children that, who are just, they, they just need a lot of time because they're, they don't have the ability to do things for themselves, with that exception, but God even works in that. I think it's a lot about just problem solving, and I just want to encourage those of you guys that maybe have small children at home to know this is doable. This is really doable. It's a matter of problem solving. It may be, you know, you have to tag team with your spouse, you know, about who, who's doing quiet time and when, and the other one holds the fort down. But it's yeah. about problem solving, and it goes back to that telling God every day you beg Him to help you have that close relationship with Him. And He will, because I think when we Show let up. Him know we need Him, just like a child, when a child tells us they need our help, we'll move heaven and earth to make sure the child gets what they need. Yeah. And God will do the same thing for us. And if I could just add one more little word, I'd like to issue a challenge to other women my age uh, that have survived the, ch I mean, enjoyed the child rearing years. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did enjoy them. Um, but you know what? Um, when younger women are asking for God to help them draw closer to Him, God might use us to encourage them. And I would, mm. I would like to remind women that are my age who may have kids still at home or kids in college or even be grandmothers to just be reminded that young women do not need our judgment and condemnation and and just critical questions. They really need There's encouragement. There's a lot with that with culture already, I yes, think, there is parents. Oh my word, there is so much pressure on parenting these days. Right, right. Really, there is no such thing there as a is. Pinterest parent. I just want to throw that out there. But anyway, I just think I'd like to issue the challenge to women my age that we be those people, that women that are strong and step into younger women's lives and dad's lives and encourage them uh, tell them some of our hair-raising stories of when our kids let out curse words in front of <laughs> church leaders and all those kinds of things that did happen and let them know 
Was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> and anyway, um, let them know it's going to be okay and offer them encouragement and love. Mm -hmm. I had some women in my life that stepped into that place and let me know it was going to be okay and just yeah. encourage me. And when they would put an arm around me and tell me they were praying for me or uh, give me a favorite scripture or a word of encouragement, that helped. I think God used those women to help me draw closer to Him. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to it's issue really the challenge to women my age and men too that we can be part of the answer to the prayer for these young moms and dads that really want to draw closer to God, but they're just frazzled and they're they just try to get someplace fully clothed without spit up down the front of them. We need to be yeah. there for them, you know. <laughs> really, we do because God. Yeah. And you guys, God's going to help you. He just will. That's his gift to parents. It's a season, so, isn't it? It's a, it is. It doesn't last forever. Yeah, it doesn't last forever. And you've heard the expression, it goes so fast. The days go slow, but the years fly by. So mm -hmm. just just know that it's going to pass before you know it, and you'll wonder what happened. So I want, through it all, hang on to God. <clears throat> hang it on. And with that, I kind of want to, I was reading a book the other day, and there was a section. It was, about, it was a book about being busy. Mm -hmm. But there's a section dedicated to just parents. And at the end of this, he said he hopes his children would look back and say this. And I wanted to read this little quote. Okay. I'm not sure what my parents were doing or if they knew what they were doing. No, we didn't. <laughs> but I always knew my parents loved me and I knew that they loved Jesus. Boom. Perfect. Um, yeah. And so even I think when it seems like you don't have time and it's busy and... You're exhausted and you're just mm -hmm. trying even for two minutes to get in time with the Lord. It's worth it. It is. It's worth it. And you're, you're, it's worth it for your children to look back and say that you love Jesus. And they're going to know it if that's what you're trying to do. And because yeah. you're going to speak about it, they're going to see you managing your time, managing the time you're on your screens. They're going to see your Bible out. They're going to hear you pray. They're going to hear you talk with them about lessons that you learned in life and how God has taught you things. They'll learn that, and they will remember that. And um, and when they get old, they'll remember the conversations. Mm -hmm. They'll remember going into the closet and watching Bible story on film strips <laughs> in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they'll remember those things. Yeah. You know, you're helping to create memories, yeah. I think, yeah. for children. And yeah. They'll remember that. Parenting's a blessing. It's a challenge, but it's a blessing because you get kids like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us for this video. Yeah. If you have any comments, please give us some feedback. We would love that. Yeah. Any other yeah. young moms or some older parents who have already kind of gone through this and want to yes. give some advice, please feel free to do that. And we will be back next week um, with part two of this series. Sounds good. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Let's go. Okay. <laughs>